Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Indie Comics Review. This is a show where every week I review three indie comic books. If this is the kind of content that you find interesting, be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button. This week I'm going to do things a little bit differently uh, in honor of Black History Month. Uh, which is almost over. Uh, I'm going to review two series, two six-book uh, limited edition series. Uh, both of them that are, both of them, I should say, are created by um, creative teams that consist of people of color. Uh, the first one is Dark Blood, and that is on the Boom label, and that one is written by Latoya Morgan, and it is illustrated by Walt Barna and also Moises, Moises Hidalgo. What if you were given the power to change the course of history? Alabama, 1955. Avery Waldridge is an ordinary young black man, a decorated World War II veteran. Avery provides for his wife and his daughter. But wounds of the past have a way of coming back, and Avery Aldridge will soon discover he is anything but ordinary. After a run-in awakened strange new abilities, Avery is about to become more powerful than he could ever have dared to dream. In a country and society that never wanted him to have power. A bold, evocative, genre-bending saga by screenwriter Latoya Morgan, AMC's The Walking Dead, and Into the Badlands, and rising star artist Walt Barner, The Osiris Path. Perfect for fans of Department of Truth and Bitterroot. As it mentions there, uh, the book is written by Latoya Morgan, but the first two issues are illustrated by uh, Walt Barna, and issues three through six are illustrated by Moistis Hidalgo. Um, I don't know what happened there. Um, maybe commitment reasons happened and they had to switch artists, but uh, that's what uh, the proper accrediting should be. Okay, so Dark Blood really is a high-minded uh, story with, um, with with good intentions. Uh, it's about this uh, this man, Avery Aldrich, uh, who grows up in the in the well. He didn't grow up, but he was um, the event takes place in the in the 1950s. Uh, they call it the Variance. Uh, even throughout the whole story, they keep saying uh, the day of the Variance, uh, ten years before the Variance, and it switches back and forth in time between the this occurrence called the variance and basically the variance is the time that he realizes his powers uh, Avery was uh, in World War II he was a pilot uh, but now in the 1950s 10 years later after World War II was ended he works uh, pretty much as a as a cook and a custodian in a diner in Alabama in the 1950s so this, this is a pretty messed up time for a uh, for black people is pre-civil rights and uh this is a this takes place uh the story begins i should say when he's coming home from work one night and he's followed by this white man who um, follows him down an alley and the guy just approaches him for, for some reason i guess he spoke out of turn to this guy and he felt that he stepped out of his place and the guy pulls a gun on him and at that point in time Avery discovers that he has powers uh, and it flashes back and forth quite a bit I mean uh, that's one of my pet peeves about this book it flashes way too much it gets to the point where it's almost confusing where sometimes it'll flash back from 55 to 45 just for a panel or two and I'm thinking if you're going to do the flashback thing you should definitely stay in the era for, for a little bit just to establish it uh, flashing back and forth, it just it kind of just gives you whiplash. Uh, so that's 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 probably my biggest complaint about the book. Um, they spend a lot of time talking about his time as a pilot, and uh, eventually uh, that part of the story is not that important in my estimation. Uh, it it, it uh, has very little to do with uh, him uh, obtaining his powers. This gives you some background into Avery as a, as a person to show you that he was this uh, this war hero who was uh, not recognized and is now just uh, this this common man who's not even expected I mean, not even respected as a man uh, in 1950s Alabama uh, but 
what he acquires powers from is this doctor. It's almost kind of like um, uh, the Captain America or uh, the truth in black and white kind of a thing where uh, he's ex he's given this uh, experimental serum unbeknownst to himself that uh, the doctor gives him and he starts to have these occurrences happen. And what happens is mostly, it, it's really a slow build. Uh, it, it's a six issue series, but I think it could have been done probably in four issues tops. Um, I don't know if Boom does four issue series or not. Uh, I know um, AWA does a four issue series or, and um, uh, Aftershock does four issue series. But I just think that they could have shortened this. And um, the, I think what happened is um, the, the author really wanted to express how much he loves his family, how much he loves his wife, how much of a good guy he is. We get all that. We, we got it. And it just it just uh, it's just such a slow burn that um, you really it doesn't leave you interested to want to to look at the next issue because it's uh it, it's so it's it's going move along so incredibly slowly so by the time you get to the end to the payoff which is in issue six the payoff is just not strong enough uh, and there, there I, I see the moment that the, that they, they were building to as far as uh uh the big moment in the end and when it happens it's just like oh wow well this would have been like a uh, much more have much more of an impact if it had happened two issues ago if this had been the climax of a four issue series um and the, the flashing back to world war ii uh where it just it's just kind of unclear as to what's happening sometimes um th that's just my biggest problem with the book uh the flashing back and the slow pace uh the art is good i didn't really uh Art, Walt Barner's art was uh, very good, and Hidalgo's art was good too in the uh, in uh, his issues that he did. I kind of preferred Barner's art, I guess, but you know it's not like it's a deal breaker. You know they were both uh, competent uh, draftsmen, absolutely. Uh, my problem is is with the pacing and with the length of the series. And there was this thing. Um, about eggs and it kind of reminded me of uh watchmen and everybody who saw watchmen knows there was this scene where eggs were uh, kind of important in the story and there was a couple scenes in in uh dark blood where i wonder i'm not trying to say <laughs> but they may have been influenced i'm not sure if this was finished before Watchmen or after Watchmen, uh, uh, the, the HBO series was was done, but there, there was this a couple of scenes where he's just like practicing his powers, and he just tries to, to manipulate these powers, and he just makes a mess with these eggs. Once he does it at work, and he has to his boss makes him pay for the eggs, and once again at home, uh, where just like he's juggling the eggs, uh, so. so uh, I, the whole egg thing, I, I wonder if that was um, maybe inspired by the Watchmen show or not. Uh, but it, it was, and, and the powers don't manifest themselves much of anything other than juggling eggs uh, for a long time. Um, he, he just uses the powers, I guess, in a, in a really productive way only in the last issue or so. Uh, before that, he's just like, and every time he uses his powers, he starts bleeding from his nose and, and it's killing him a little bit every time he uses his powers. Uh, it, it's, it's, I really wanted to like a lot about this. I do like a lot about this this uh, this book. Um, there's some nice covers by Juni Ba. Uh, there's the artwork is good, as I said, and it, its intentions is good, and it does incorporate a lot of historical fact along with uh, some fantastical superhero fiction which is both of these series actually do uh, this one however falls a little bit short and it's a shame because uh i think with better editing maybe 
uh, this could have been a, a, a more impactful series. And it's a little bit heavy handed and a little bit disjointed, uh, but not a terrible book. I mean, some people may enjoy it. Some people may love, may like the pacing. They may, they, they may get into it. Um, when I was reading it uh, monthly as it came out every month, I didn't dig it so much uh, after it all came out. I read uh, one through six uh, just uh, the other day. Okay, it, it, went a, it, went, it was easier to take because it's almost over. You know, I, I can just go straight through it. And then that's where I really noticed that it was somewhat repetitive and um, it just, just could have been done a lot quicker. So that said, uh, I give this kind of a, a passing grade. Uh, I, I get what they're trying to do and uh, I respect that a great deal but I think for me uh, it's it just falls a little bit short which is a shame because uh, Dark Blood is a book with good intentions and uh, its message is definitely worth hearing but the pacing in the um, in the way that it unfolds is just a little bit slow for me. The next book is White and this is on the Black Mask label. It is written by Kwanzaa Osayefo, and it is illustrated by Jamal Igle. The team that asked, what if black people had superpowers? And only black people is back with a sequel to the critically acclaimed series Black. It's been three years since the world learned that only black people have superhuman abilities. And the United States has responded by electing Theodore Mann to the presidency. The only person standing in the way of his policies to control empowered blacks are Kareem Jenkins and his allies. White comics are limited to 2,500 copies each. Now it should be noted that White is the sequel to another six issue series called Black uh, that was also put out uh, a couple years before uh, on Black Mass Studios. Uh, you don't really need to know uh, what happened in uh, Black to enjoy White, but it helps because uh, it, it sets up the whole world. Uh, and I think the more you know about it, uh, the more you probably enjoy it. As White begins, Theodore Mann has already been elected President of the United States. Theodore Mann. That's right. The man. That's one thing I love about White. White has a biting satire to it. It's, um, I know it may make some people uncomfortable uh, just to talk about race in general. Okay, that's gonna happen. But White talks about it and it also brings, uh, in addition to historical accuracy and uh, events like, like in, um, as I mentioned before, in the HBO Watchmen series, which uh, led a lot of people even uh, for the first time, realize uh, what happened in the whole um, Tulsa massacre. Some people had no idea what that was about. Uh, White also mentions um, historical uh, atrocities and things that have happened to black people throughout history and it incorporates um, history along with fantasy. And uh, add to that current events. So it, uh, it, it mixes in a whole lot of different scenarios and it does it well. Uh, as it begins, the man, Theodore Mann, has become uh, president of the United States. And his son is this hothead. Uh, and his, once he's running the country, um, very much like a, like a crime boss. And he's got his family involved with, uh, with, with, with the administration and everything. Uh, his son actually has this, um, this suit which is like a like Iron Man's armor sort of, and uh, he's fighting all these superpowered uh, blacks who are uh, labeled as terrorists. And um, as it begins, there's an attempt on the president's life by one of these superpowered terrorists, um, and the son comes after him. And uh, the the person that he was about to assassinate, the uh, Theodore J. Man, is a um, is one of the uh, the main characters, which is um, uh, Kareem. Kareem uh, goes by the name X, which is he's he's almost like a combination of Luke Cage and Superman, as if he can't fly, uh, but he cannot be killed. He's bulletproof, and uh, his origin is explained in the uh, in the Black series. Uh, but uh, we get a quick 
you know, Cliff knows version of who he is. And you can see that uh, he's like, uh, he's the, the, the opposite of man's son, who is Thaddeus. Uh, um, Thaddeus man is, uh, is, is Theodore man's son. So uh, X is the antithesis of this guy. And he's, he's a hothead, just like, uh, like man's son is. And he's always flying off the handle. He, he's, he's very powerful, but he, he gets his team in trouble a lot. And he's always being chastised by the leader because the leader sees great things in him and he wants him to, uh, to be better, pretty much. He, he wants him to, uh, to eventually become the, the leader and uh, the force that, that he should be. Uh, this, there's so much good. Uh, and, and if you're just open to just opening up to something that uh, is different, step outside your comfort zone, uh, because this book is not going to be for everybody. It's going to make a lot of people uncomfortable. Uh, the the dialogue is authentic. It 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 uh, it's written by black people. It talks the way black people talk when they're with each other. Uh, and it's like you're listening in on this world if you're not used to it. You know, there's a lot of a lot of swearing, you know, and a lot of dropping up the N-word that makes you uncomfortable. You know, then this might not be for you. But if you are open to something that you normally don't watch or normally you don't read, then uh, you, you might find yourself uh, you might find yourself entertained by this book. This is a, a very clever book. It's it, it uh it's not heavy-handed as some books can be. It's not trying to drive you drive a lesson home, but it just it drops authenticity and it drops current events. It mixes all those things in with this uh, this fantastical story of uh, superheroes who just uh, happen to be black. At no point in time did black uh, did did, uh, did did white lag there was no point where i was thinking oh my god this is repetitive this is dragging uh this i read this book uh, i didn't read it until i got all six issues and i'm glad i did because it just moved like that uh i'm just going through them quickly um the story was easy to follow it was filled with action but it was not gratuitous action the artwork is excellent uh, it, I imagine only because of budgetary constraints that it wasn't done in black and white. Probably the same reason that it was only uh, a 2,500 copy uh, print limit. But if they had been able to have a larger budget and do this book in color, it, it would have been even more fantastic. But I don't even mind the fact that it's in black and white. Uh, I think uh, Dark Blood had a, probably a bigger budget maybe, I don't know, but uh, and it uh, it was in color, and if Dark Blood had been in black and white, it, it it would probably have been not as good as it was. But with black, with white, I should say, uh, which is technically black volume two, with white, th this book doesn't miss a beat. The 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 coloring is great, even though it's black and white. Uh, the story is is great. Uh, the writing is smart. The writing is timely. The writing is authentic. This is written by people who uh, who know what time it is. These are street smart people who are aware, and they don't write it from a condescending or from um, or from a, an angry point of view, but they write it from a realistic point of view. Uh, and uh, if you can be open minded and just listen to the story and not come in with any preconceived notions or any kind of a, a aversion to wokeness or or any kind of thing like that then you might be able to enjoy this book i, I highly recommend that people just check this book out uh you can get it uh in a trade right now because the the issues are hard to come by uh, you can find them somewhere second third printing you know good luck with that but uh, both black and white are available uh, in trades. You can go to Black Masks um, website and get them there. I think they're 1995, 1999. Uh, each uh, each trade is that much, and I recommend them highly. Uh, this is a book that I think you would enjoy. In fact, I'm going to go get the um, 
get black just so I can just uh, catch up on uh, what happened uh, in the first issue and maybe read the whole thing all over again. White is, if this isn't turned into something, you know, it won't be because it's not good. It'll be because they haven't pitched it to the right person yet who can make this happen. This could be a really good uh, film project um, in the same vein as the Watchmen HBO show, but more original uh, and, and not, it doesn't uh, borrow anything from it. It just uh, takes it in another direction. So white on black mask, check this book out. This is a really good series and I recommend it highly. So that's it for this Indie Comics review. Next week, hopefully I'll be getting some new comics in. I'm sure I'll be getting some from some source, if, not, if nothing uh, more than uh, mycomicshop.com. So I have some fresh books to do reviews of. Um, also, uh, at that point, I'll probably do another uh, um, Artist Alley. So it'll be back to the normal format next week. So thanks for stopping by. Be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button and turn notifications on if you want to know when I'm making another video. So until next time, see you guys in the funny papers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up.